In the past video, I talked about computing ionic strength and activity coefficients, and we use those computed activity coefficients to calculate the solubility of a very insoluble salt, silver chloride. In this case, we're going to calculate the ionic strength and activity coefficients in a problem where the salt is uh, moderately soluble. And the salt that I'm going to pick is, is lithium fluoride. So because lithium fluoride is moderately soluble, the process of dissolution creates real concentrations of lithium and fluoride, real enough that they contribute to the ionic strength. And because I contribute to the ionic strength, I change the activity coefficients. And because I change the activity coefficients, I change the solubility. And so we get ourselves into a bit of a circular problem that until we know what the solubility is, we don't know what the ionic strength is. And until we know what the ionic strength is, we don't know what the activity coefficients are. And then we can't compute solubility. So the solution we're going to take is an iterative one. And I'm going to begin by assuming that the ionic strength is zero. So that's what I put into cell uh, C5. And then I'm going to go ahead and calculate the activity coefficient for fluoride and the activity coefficient for lithium. Now notice I've gone ahead and I've just put in the extended to by Huckel equation. And for these ions, I need to know the charge, which I just keyed in by hand. Um, I also need to know the ion size, which I've tabulated in cells E6 and E7. So if my ionic strength is zero, my activity coefficients are one. Um, and so they're both completely correct and um, boring. The next thing I need to do is to put in the KSP. So I would look that up. And so you can go to the resource on our website and look up the solubility of lithium fluoride. And it's 1.7 times 10 to the minus 3. Um, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that equilibrium constant, that KSP, by the activity coefficients to create a KSP star. And we've been calling them KSP primes. And people interchangeably use asterisks or primes to indicate a conditional equilibrium constant, in this case, conditional on the ionic strength of the system. Well, because the activity coefficients are 1, the KSP prime is the same as the KSP. Well, we can now take the square root of that. And that's what I've done in cell C10 to calculate the lithium concentration. And since it's a one-to-one -one salt, we also know the fluoride concentration. So nothing fancy there. Now here's where things get interesting. You'll notice that I have 0.04 molar lithium and 0.04 molar fluoride. So the ionic strength assumption that I started with, where the ionic strength was zero, is wrong. And so what I've done in cell 13 is I've computed the ionic strength. I've got a better estimate for the ionic strength. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to cell C5, and I'm going to say it is equal to not 0, but cell C13. So I have set up a circular reference because cell C5 gives us values for cells 6 and 7, which gives us a value for cell C9, which gives us a value for C10 and 11, which gives us a value for C13, which I'm feeding right back up into cell C5. And this is another example of iteration. The first example I showed you was calculating some acid-base chemistry. Now, if you do this in Excel and you don't have iteration turned on, it's going to squawk at you. But if you go into the preferences and you allow iteration to occur, it will actually run in a loop until the values in the spreadsheet are no longer changing. So here I go. I'm going to hit return. And boom. You notice that the gamma was not 0.04, but it it's now 0.05, and it's actually cycled about 20 times. It's just happened faster than you can see it. And now notice my starting estimate for ionic strength equals my ending estimate for ionic strength. They're not exactly the same. Notice 0.05014, 0.05010, 0 
but they're close enough that um, the system has been, we say it has converged. So there we go. That is now um, an estimate for the lithium concentration, the fluoride concentration. But notice I now have the gammas for fluoride and lithium. So if I want the activity for fluoride, the activity is going to be the activity coefficient, gamma fluoride times the fluoride concentration. And the activity of lithium is going to be gamma lithium times the lithium concentration. So those are activities. So this is an example of how we can use iteration to solve complex problems where the equilibria that we're studying actually changes the ionic strength of the system, and we have to use iteration to solve.